The roar of the motorcycles echoed through the empty forest road. Empty, other than Jonah and Noah winding around the turns and twists cut through the dense forest. They were heading back toward their family's encampment from their last job. Noah was dwelling on the death of the little girl, tortured by the fact there was nothing they could do to save her, and they had to leave her there to hunt down and finish off the beast that murdered her. So evil that it would use a little girl as bait so it could attack them. In his mind, it was their fault the child had died. It's just not right, he thought to himself, tears swelling in his eyes. An image of her laying there, panting and shaking as her intestines are spread out all around her. A shiver shoots through his body. They had been riding for about four hours at this point. They were only about another hour from the camp. Jonah was excited to see his family again. His mother would be waiting and would probably have some of his favorite venison stew cooking on the fire and ready for them upon their return. Noah's eyes burned and his vision blurred slightly from the tears. He heard Joni yell something out suddenly behind him and when he turned his head towards him, he slammed right into a doe that had emerged from the forest. With a large crash and a bang, Noah found himself airborne. He slammed into the pavement hard and felt a snap in his leg. He tumbled and skid down the road as his body went numb and everything went black around him. Noah! Jonas screamed as he screeched to a halt. He jumped off his bike, letting it crash to the ground before he even came to a complete stop. He rushed to his brother, who was not moving or making a single sound. Noah, fuck man, say something, are you okay? Nothing. Not a breath or a moan could be heard coming from his brother lying there motionless. As he got closer, he could see that his leg was twisted in an unnatural direction, and he was in a pool of his own blood. Jonah felt a rush of panic come over him. Oh my god, Noah! He screamed out. With shaking hands, he reached down to check his brother for signs of life. He wasn't breathing, and there was no pulse. He immediately began CPR in a desperate attempt to save his brother, his twin, the person he had shared everything with his entire life. He would do rounds of this and then stop to check for a pulse periodically. Eventually, what seemed like hours to Jonah, but what was only a couple of minutes, he felt a weak pulse pumping through his brother. He jumped to his feet and ran to his bike and rummaged through the side saddlebags to find his first aid kit. They carried extensive kits with them because of the likelihood of serious injury during their jobs. He pulled out the clotting bandages and began to put them on the wounds that were bleeding the most. He took a roll of gauze and wrapped them around the road rash that, in some spots, went so deep that it exposed muscle. After he had attended to the wounds, he stood up and wiped his hands, which were now covered with the blood of his brother, onto his coat and pulled his cell phone from his pocket. He immediately called his mother. Jonah, are you and your brother almost back? I have some- Jonah cut her off. Mom, Noah's hurt bad, real bad. I need to get him back, Mom. I'll be on my way as quick as I can. Be ready. I, I, I'm not sure he's going to... He broke up and began to sob. What happened? Jonah, are you there? Never mind that. Pull it together and get back now. His mother pleaded on the phone. Jonah took a deep breath and looked back at his brother, still motionless. He checked for a pulse again, then loaded him onto his bike behind him and strapped him to himself. He took off with a quickness toward the camp, still shaking while adrenaline took over. It took him only 27 minutes to traverse the hour that they had had left. When he pulled up to the camp, Clarence, the surgeon, Deborah, his nurse, and the twins' mother was waiting for them. During the ride, Jonah had heard Noah make a few moans of pain and he had attempted to tell him something, but he couldn't make it out. At this point, he had once again fully lost consciousness. They quickly unloaded him off of the bike and onto a straight stretcher and carried him into the large medical tent. Dear Lord, what happened, Jonah? Clarence said as he began to cut off Noah's clothes. There was an accident. A deer jumped out right in front of him. I, I tried to warn him, but it, it all happened so fast. Jonah replied, looking downward with tears rolling down his cheeks. Clarence checked over Noah's body, feeling here and there, uncovering various bandages to look at the wounds. All the while, a grave look of concern distorting his aged face. 
Clarence Trindell was 72 years old and a great uncle of Noah and Jonah. He was well built for a man of his age and his long, now white hair was pulled back messily into a ponytail. He became the family doctor by being thoroughly trained by his father, the previous doctor. That is how things were done in this family. But he was a great doctor and an adequate surgeon. This is really bad. Jonah, take your mother and wait outside, please. I need to focus. He has multiple broken ribs, a broken leg, dislocated shoulder, and a lot of lacerations. He's lost a lot of blood. Jonah, I may need you for a transfusion. We will call you if that is the case. Now I need to get him stabilized and hope the internal bleeding is not too much, Clarence said in a slightly hushed but urgent voice. Uh, okay. Come on, Mom, we really can't do much for him now. I just... I mean, I wish... <laughs> Jonah started to break up again and sighed. His mother bent down and kissed Noah's head gently. You hold on there, Noah. We will be just outside. His mother said and turned to Jonah. Come, Jonah. I know you did all you could. She then hugged onto his arm and guided him outside. Debbie, I need you to grab my surgeon's tools, an IV of morphine and as many gauze as you can carry. We have our work cut out for us, child. Deborah simply nodded. She was Clarence's granddaughter. She is a young girl who went mute at the age of five, seeing her mother ripped apart by what many would call a wendigo. She had been with her mother deep in a forest when it all had happened, though she herself had no memories of that fateful event. Deborah had no real memories of her mother apart from a few scenarios which offered her mind's eye only a silhouette and a faint voice but no face to ease her heart. She was very good at helping Clarence, however, and was on her way to be the next family doctor if she could finish her training before the Lord called to take Clarence away. She was only 16 years old, but had already been doing this work for five years. She returned with all the things that were needed and set them up around Noah. She then nodded again. Let's get to work then. There's no time to lose if we're to save his life, Clarence said and started to get right to work attempting to put the pieces of Noah back together again.